Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 1402 that says reducing dishes. So here you are given one collection of data uh, named satisfaction. So it consists of n dishes and you need to find the like time coefficient. So like time coefficient is simply a multiplication between time of i and satisfaction of i. Okay, now how this time of i uh, is calculated? So let's say you pre initially prepare this dish, dish number 1. So the time at this dish is 1. Then for this dish, if you prepare this dish at the second second, so time is 2. So let's say if you prepare this dish at a, at a third, the, at the third, so the time is 3 second. So you will multiply this time of 5, let's say 3 into 5, 2 into minus 8, 1 into minus 1. So that would be the lifetime coefficient. Okay, got it. And we need to somehow maximize the sum of lifetime coefficient, right? We need to maximize the sum. Okay, now the thing here is the dishes can be prepared in any order. And the chef can discard some of the dishes to get the maximum value. So means there is no particular order of how a chef can prepare the dish. Means chef can choose this dish, uh, this dish as the first. Then he can prepare this dish. Then he can prepare this dish. And also he can discard some of the dishes as he wishes. So at the end, we just need to uh, find the maximum sum of this like like time coefficient. So guys, if you take a look at this example, so here the chef chooses. To prepare this dish at a time one second then this dish at time two second and this dish at a time three second so the overall satisfaction would be what minus one into one plus zero into two plus five into three that is 14 correct see there is no an another better way to find the answer right let's say a chef will prepare this dish zero into time one second plus this dish at a time two second the answer would be 10 right it would be 10 okay so there is no way to get answer better than 14 here uh, so yeah, as you can see that uh, taking the positive uh, satisfaction dish will always increment our answer. But somehow we also need to take some negative uh, dish so to increment the time. See here we just simply wanted to increment the time and this overall multiplication will yield a higher value. Correct. So sometimes we may have to choose this negative value also to get the best possible answer. Now if you take a look at this example. So let's order this. Let's sort this. 2, 3, 4. Now this dish can be prepared at a time one second, this two and this is three. See here the satisfaction is also high and the time is also high. So that's why the overall time copy coefficient would be increased, right? It would be the largest. So yeah, this is how uh, we can get the maximum uh, sum of all the time coefficient. Okay. Now here if you guys see uh, that if you prepare minus one to one, only one dish, right? Other dishes are already were negative so if you prepare only one dish then also the answer would be minus one but a chef can choose to discard all the dishes so here in this case chef will discard all the dishes he won't prepare any dish so overall time coefficient sum would be zero no dishes are prepared here so yeah this is also one possible case so guys from this thing something uh, must be clear that here we need to sort the dishes see on sorting then we can say that all the dishes present on the right side are uh, are positive and the left are negative so if you sort d7 so it would be what it would be something like minus 9 minus 8 then minus 1 0 and 5 okay so guys if you can see that here everything on the right are better values and on the left are negative values that will always decrement your answer so on sorting this uh, we can check the on sorting this we can check uh, our order see uh, we can take any order for for the dishes we can prepare this dish first then this dish but on the sorting we will get some idea yeah if we uh, so uh, we will get some ideas so that from where to start and where to not which dishes to include and which to not okay so sorting will help correct it will help somewhere now how we have to use sorting that is on us now okay here also if you have seen sorting helps correct so now guys uh, if you have to take a look that here we have some type of choices see there are two, two choices that uh, a choice to include and a dish and not to include see if you have something like this one minus three two eight minus ten so for each dish you have two choices include or not to include include or not to include correct because if a dish is made or not made then these are the only two choices like you can prepare a chef can either prepare a dish or discard a dish so yeah for all the dishes chef has only two choices correct so based on these choices we can what we can write a recursive code and memorize it 
see this is what we are doing in when we have choices we write recursive code and memorize it so now what are the only variables that are changing if you write a recursive code see one variable that is changing that is the index of the satisfaction error and the second variable that is changing is the time okay correct these are the only two variables that are changing the time is incrementing and the index is changing uh, each time so yeah uh, we have to just keep in mind that these two are the changing variables and that we need to handle in the memorization code when we are memorizing the recursive solution okay so this is clear like where we have choices so based on the choices we write recursive code and we can memorize it so guys if you take a look at the code here for recursive plus memorization solution see we just handle two choices either to either to take or include or to discard see if you include the current dish then we have to add the uh, time coefficient like satisfaction of the current index into the current time plus solving ahead as if we discard it then we just simply increment the index and we make time as it is okay clear till here these are the only two choices that are handled in this recursive solution others is simple like we first sort it then we memorize it and we, then we call this uh, recursion function so initially also we have this global variable dp where we would store the index and the time these two are only the changing variables okay uh, got till here see now if you have uh, if you have a question that why we why we are applying the sorting here see uh, we are applying sorting because let's say in this example only if we apply sorting like minus 10 minus 3 1 2 and 8 see what we want we want higher time to be multiplied with higher satisfaction want to want to multiply higher time into a higher satisfaction value so that's why we sorted right so towards the end if you move the time will all be at it's simply incrementing the time so towards the right we are incrementing the time and the values must also uh, increment so to handle this see this is all we are doing right but to do this we what we are doing we are simply sorting and that this is the way only we can get the correct answer okay see if you multiply 8 by 2 here then you won't get best answer but if you multiply it by 8 by 3 or 8 by 4 whatever is feasible here so if you try to multiply with a higher time then only you will get higher answer and our and as our indexing how our index will increase index will increase towards the right similarly time will also increase towards the right as we are moving towards the right so our satisfaction value must also increase to get the best possible answer and to do that we are sorting in ascending order clear till here okay so now this is one approach the time and space complexity of this approach is big of n square see here what here the size of dp is what n square and we are simply filling this dp uh, to rearm so the time complexity would be also big of n square and space complexity is always here big of n square correct so this is the time and space complexity of this recursion plus memorization approach now moving further forward can we somehow improve this time complexity so yeah we can improve this time complexity and let's discuss that approach Uh, so guys, uh, so let me tell you, uh, let me sort one array and write it again. Eight. Let's say this is a satisfaction array and I have already sorted it in the ascending order. Okay. Now, we since we have two choices that either to include and not to include in the recursion. So similarly, I think we can do here. See, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say if you are starting uh, your array from here. If you're starting from array from here so what would be the answer 3 into 1 plus 8 into 2 right this would be your answer 3 into 1 plus 8 into 2 correct because here the time would be 2 so if let's say if you are starting from here and in, including all the elements from towards the right that way you are trying to do it okay so if you are at here then what would be the answer 1 into 1 plus 3 into 2 plus 8 into 3 this can be the answer okay what would be the answer here minus 3 into 1 plus 0 into 2 plus 1 into 3 plus plus 3 into 4 plus 8 into 5 see this would be the answer here correct so what what is this thing this is simply that if you are starting preparing a dish from here and including all the dishes present on the right so this is also the same thing if you are starting from here and including all the dishes towards the right this would be the answer similarly here for this element this would be the answer okay clear till here now how why we are doing this we are doing this because we know that towards the right our answer will simply increase so we just need to select 
द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट द बेस्ट पॉसिबल स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ओके बिकॉज टूअर्स द राइट आवर आंसर इज डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू इंग्रेस बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी सॉर्टेड दिस इन असाइडिंग ऑर्डर करेक्ट सो या we will use this intuition that towards the right our answer will increase so we need to select one efficient uh, starting point okay now let me show you how how we would approach that so to do that we will maintain one suffix sum and current answer we will maintain these two variables okay For each value, we will maintain these two variables. Now, currently, as you guys can see, what is the suffix sum? Eight. Current answer is eight. Here, what is the suffix sum? Eleven. What can be the current answer? Our current answer would be three uh, plus two times of eight. That would be ninety. So, what is that? Three plus twice of previous suffix sum. So, previous suffix sum was eight. So, into twice we are doing because the eight is now added two times, right? So, yeah. Current current value plus twice the previous suffix sum. Okay. Now here what is the suffix sum? Twelve. Here what will be the current answer? One plus three into two plus eight into three. Eight is a twenty-four plus six. Thirty thirty-one would be the answer. So how you can get thirty-one? You can get one plus twice of previous suffix sum. So guys, here what we are simply doing? We are simply adding one more three and one more eight. See. Here three was one time, but here it's three is two times and eight is three times. So what is that? So this is the current answer. See, we already have nineteen. So we already have nineteen. Plus what we have to add? Plus we have to add this one. But plus this backward elements are incremented one time means they are added one time again because we are multiplied. See initially if this is multiplied by one, then now it is multiplied by two. So one plus three also we have to add. Plus eight also we have to add. Because initially it was multiplied by two. Now for this, if this is the starting point, it will multiply by three. So one more eight. Will be added. Now, what is this? Eight plus three. This is simply but a suffix sum, previous suffix sum, and that we will add here. Okay. So yeah, this is how we will calculate the suffix sum and current answer. And from the current answer, what the maximum possible answer would be our answer, right? We would also keep one uh, variable max answer, and maximum answer would be we would check with the current answer. So we would get if any time we would get answer current answer greater than maximum answer, then we would Change uh, the maximum answer to the current answer. Okay, this is simple. But the thing, only thing to change to note here is that every time we move towards the left, all the elements of the right will get added one more time. Okay, see here the value was only one eight. But if you move one towards the left, then the all the elements towards the right added one more time. So we have two times of eight. Now here instead of two times of eight, we are adding three times of eight. Means one more added add eight is added here in the current answer. Okay, I will show you the code and make you a dry run for better understanding. Okay, so now this is the code. Uh, this we are doing sorting here. This is the current answer, and this is the we are updating suffix sum. So firstly, the what the what was the previous answer in the suffix sum that we are added? We are adding to the current answer. Okay, so let me take one simple adder, minus ten, zero, one, and five. Okay, so here this S S means the suffix sum. The C A would be the current answer. Assume it is. Okay, now but. Let me take it like this. So initially, what uh, our what we are doing in the current answer? So our current answer is a suffix current answer plus equal to suffix sum plus satisfaction of i. Suffix sum was initially zero. A satisfaction of i is the value. So since see we are traversing from the back end, backward side, right? We are moving from right to the left. So here the current answer is five. Okay, suffix sum is zero and satisfaction of i is five. Now the suffix sum here is what? It is also five. Now for the next loop. For the next loop, what we are again doing, we are doing current answer plus equal to suffix sum plus satisfaction of. Now here the suffix sum is what phi, and satisfaction of phi is one. So here our our answer our would be see we are adding current answer plus satisfaction is plus suffix sum that is phi plus phi ten and eleven. Okay, we are seeing we are adding this to the previous current answer, and same for the suffix sum phi plus this uh, it would be six here. Now for the next loop, what we are doing from for this eleven, we are adding this this answer this suffix sum. So eleven plus six sixteen plus zero, it is sixteen, right? And six plus zero, it would be six. Now sixteen is the current answer, and we will add this sixteen plus six. It's how much? Twenty two minus ten. It's how much? Twenty two minus ten. 
is minus 12. Uh, sorry, not minus 12, it's simply 12. And here the answer would be minus 4. Okay. So if we, uh, so this is how, based on this suffix, uh, we are calculating the current answer. Got it. And here this if condition, we will check that if whenever the current answer is greater than maximum answer, we will update current maximum answer. And if at any point current answer beco uh, become less than zero, we will simply break because there is no point of uh, moving ahead towards the left because our answer will always reduce. See, moving towards the left, our answer will reduce. So yeah, there is no point uh, to calculate again. So yeah, I hope you guys understood this that how we are uh, calculating the current answer, right? So yeah, the time complexity here for this equation is big O of n log of n and the space complexity would be big O of uh, are you storing anything? No, we are not storing anything. So the space complexity is big of one. The time complexity is n log n because of the sorting function. And yeah, we are not doing anything. These are the simply variables. We are not storing anything. So the space complexity is one. So guys, as you can observe that uh, the previous time complexity was n square and n square about the time and space complexity that we have reduced it to a very much large extent. So this greedy approach will work here definitely. And it is one of the best approach to, to solve this question. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you guys have any doubts, then do, do let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.